When most people think of Oaxaca, they think about mountains and moles, ancient culture, colorful traditions. They don't immediately think about surf and sand and beach resorts. But the state of Oaxaca has some beautiful resort towns on its southern coast, ones that I think stack up against any of the famous beach locations in Mexico. I'm in Huatulco, looking for a good breakfast to start my day. If you know anything about me, you know I'm always on a quest to find a real, authentic meal, even in the middle of a touristy area like this. You know, no matter where you are in the world, there's going to be a local flavor to the breakfast. And it's not going to be what you're used to, is my guess. I mean, if you're in China, it's going to be a bowl of congee with some pickly things added. In the Middle East, it's all these different kinds of savory dips. France has a baguette and a little bit of butter, nothing more, maybe a cup of coffee. I grew up with biscuits and gravy, but let's face it, in the morning, all of us want what we're used to, what's really comforting. Now, I'm here in Huatulco at a place called Sabor de Oaxaca, the flavor of Oaxaca. And it really does give you the opportunity to experience some of the local flavors. So my suggestion is that when you're on vacation, at least one morning, break out of your comfort zone and go find the local food. Now, it's pretty different. So just I'm going to show you this here on the, the menu. Uh, Desayunos Oaxaqueños, the Oaxacan breakfast. It starts with enchiladas not what most people would expect to have for breakfast. Goes to a, through a whole litany of different tortilla-based breakfasts down the egg section here. But there's this one dish that I wanted to order that I just love. It's a local specialty called huevos oaxaqueños, the Oaxacan-style eggs. And that dish is essentially an omelet. As with any omelet, it starts with eggs. They're beaten and then poured into a hot skillet that's been coated with a little oil. And as those eggs finish cooking, they get folded over a couple of times before being scooped into a skillet that contains a spicy tomato sauce, one that's seasoned with those local chiles de agua. Then everything is spooned into a serving bowl with a generous portion of that sauce on top. This may take you out of your comfort zone, but to me, that is really delicious. The reason that I rarely make Oaxacan omelet or any omelet for guests is that, well, by the time you finish the last one, the first one has gotten cold. So I've got a new approach to doing omelets for guests that I think you're really gonna like. Plus, it's gonna have that great Oaxacan omelet flavor. So first we gotta make that sauce. I'm gonna roast some tomatoes, put them onto a baking sheet. I've laid a piece of foil on here just for easy cleanup. A couple of chilies. Now, these chilies are hot banana peppers. In Oaxaca, of course, they would use the chile de agua, which I think is really good, but these have a bright flavor and a lot of heat too. So put them underneath the broiler, which I've already preheated. We're gonna let those roast for about five minutes per side until they're blackened and blistered. To start the sauce, a skillet goes on to about a medium-high heat. I'm going to add a little film of olive oil and then slice half an onion to saute until it's brown. When the roasted tomatoes and chilies have cooled down to room temperature, pull the skin off of those chilies, then pull out the seed pod, scrape out all the seeds, and then cut the chili into little strips about a quarter of an inch wide, maybe an inch and a half long. Peel the blackened skin off of those roasted tomatoes, then put them into a food processor or a blender and process until you've got a kind of coarse puree. Roasted and peeled and seeded and sliced chilies. Go in with those browned onions now. Give that a stir just to combine them. And when they get hot, I'm gonna add our puree of tomatoes. I'm gonna let this cook down until it gets a little bit darker and thicker. I'm going to add a little bit of broth to this. I'm just using 
a store-bought broth, good quality. Okay, about a cup and a quarter. And here's what makes this sauce so distinctively Oaxacan, and that is epazote. Easy to grow in the U.S., you can find it at a lot of farmer's markets, even some well-stocked grocery stores, certainly Mexican grocery stores, try it out because it is such a beautiful flavor. I'm going to pull off the leaves only and put those in. Just a sprinkling of salt now. Let it simmer over about a medium-low heat for about 15 minutes while we get all the preparations ready for the omelet. I'm going to crack eight eggs in here. Add some salt to these eggs. And then I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup of water. This will lighten the texture of those eggs. And now I'm going to beat them just enough to blend the yolk and the white. Fill the pan with a, a generous coating of olive oil. Pour in the eggs. As it bubbles up, drag the cooked part to the center. And when almost all of the egg is set, start to roll it forward. Then right into your platter. And then spoon the sauce over and around the omelet. I love queso fresco on this dish, so I'm going to crumble over the top some beautiful fresh cheese. Decorate the whole thing with some leaves of epazote. It's just as easy as that. You've got brunch for a crowd. A couple of hours by car along Oaxaca's southern coast is Puerto Escondido. The town's a little older and more rustic than Huatulco, and it's really well known for its surfing and its fishing. And that's all it takes to get me over there for lunch. This is really my kind of place. I'm on the Playa Principal in Puerto Escondido, the place where all of the small fishermen come in in their little boats and with their catch. I mean, this is the stuff that they've just gone just right off the coast here and gotten. They leave early in the morning, they come back mid-morning, and there's this incredible array of fish. Now, it's gonna be a different kind of fish than what you're normally gonna get in, well, even in the fish markets in Mexico City. This is the local catch. And we've got a little mahi-mahi here. This is just a tiny mahi-mahi, one that they call cocinero, right? Cocinero. But I'm gonna ask them to make the most famous local specialty here, which is pescado a la talla. ¿Me puedo tiletear uno de estos como para, para hacer a la talla? Sí, perfecto, muchas gracias. This incredibly fresh catch gets filleted in a somewhat unique style before it's ready to be cooked. The filleted fish is spread with garlic oil and then placed in a basket over a smoky wood fire. After a few minutes of cooking, the fish is flipped onto the other side and smeared with a red chili adobo marinade and some creamy mayonnaise. I squeeze a little lime over the top of this pescado a la talla, local specialty, made with local chilies, a local fish. I'm in heaven. This to me is the absolute perfect way to eat when I'm traveling. It's a, it's a flavor that I can't get anywhere else. This is a meal fit for a king, but in a beautiful, rustic spot. It just makes you want to relax. Fish a la talla is such a delicious dish that I wanted to show you how to prepare it. You could use fillets if you wanted to. It'd still be a delicious dish. I've got some sea bass fillets here. You could make it with snapper or grouper, maybe some mahi-mahi or yellowtail. But for those of you that are adventurous cooks, 
or fishermen, I wanted to show you how to prepare the fish just the way they do on the beach in Puerto Escondido. First, we've got to scale the fish. Our next step is to cut off these lower fins. I'm gonna use a pair of scissors to do that. Next starts the filleting, starting right up here on the top side of the backbone. Free it at the base all the way through, but not cutting through the skin on the underside. When you get to the rib cage here, I'm gonna cut right down through that rib cage, just like that. Now, just doing the exact same thing on the other side getting as much flesh off of the bone as possible. At this point, we should be able to free up the entire backbone. Now this next step is probably the hardest of all the steps because we have to split it right down through the top here. I'm using a large cleaver to do this and I wanna go all the way down but not through the fish. All of the innards come out. Remember to slide those right into the sink here. A quick rinse. Now, this may seem like an odd way to fillet a fish to you. Usually we take the fillets right off of the bone or we open it another direction, but the way that they do it in Puerto Escondido is to leave it attached at the base, giving you a really beautiful looking whole fish splayed out. And just wait till you see this thing come off the fire. It is so worth it. The classic marinade for pescado a la talla is called an adobo, and it's made from dried red chilies and roasted garlic. I've got the roasted garlic right here in front of me. I'm gonna let those cool off. They were roasted in their little papery skins, dry skillet, about 15 minutes, turning them from time to time. I'm gonna prepare these guajillo chilies. Pull off the top, tear the chili open, dump out the seeds and pull out the veins Taking the veins out will make it less spicy. I've got three arbol chilies. The arbols are a little spicier, kind of a nutty flavor. Pull the stems off of those. That's all you have to do with these. And now on to the toasting. With the guajillo chilies, I'm gonna lay them flat one at a time in the skillet. To press them down until you start to smell their aroma. You'll notice that their color changes slightly. Flip them over and press on the other side. Toss the arbol chilies into the pan without opening them up. Just let them toast for a minute. Cover them with hot tap water. Weight them with a plate to keep them submerged and let them rehydrate for about a half an hour. The chilies are ready now, so I'm gonna take the plate off the top of them. I'm gonna put them into the blender. Pour a little bit of our soaking liquid in there. The roasted garlic goes in. I'm gonna grind some pepper and add that to the blender, along with some Mexican oregano. I buy this at the Mexican grocery store. So it's in the holy form. We need to crush it like that, which is always a pleasant experience because it releases its aroma. Then I'm going to put the top on and blend it to a smooth puree. Guajillo chilies have a really tough skin, so in case they're not completely pureed, I'm gonna strain them, not through any kind of fancy strainer, but just a, a simple medium mesh one and press it through. Needs a seasoning of salt. Remember, this is your marinade, so you're gonna to wanna to season it fairly highly because we're gonna use this to baste over the fish. Okay, it's time to cook the fish. 
So I've got a grill basket for fish. I like this one because it has flexible rods and you can see that it just holds the fish in place really nicely like that. I'm gonna just get it nicely oiled with a little olive oil over that side. And open that up and brush it evenly. Flip it. A little more olive oil. And I'm going to sprinkle it lightly with salt. Secure the grill basket. And then I'm going to put it flesh side down over the coals. I've got a beautiful, beautiful bed of coals here. Everything is cooked down, so I'm not going to get a lot of flare ups. Everybody's fire is going to be a little bit different, but for me, it's been about five or six minutes, and I think it's just about ready to flip. Flip it over and there. It's just starting to brown. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to open up the grill basket like that. We have our red chili adobo here, and I'm going to just spoon it over the fish and kind of generously. The last little flavor that goes on this, and this may surprise some of you, but it's classic, is mayonnaise. But mayonnaise that I have thinned with just a little bit of milk. And I'm going to dollop it around over the top of the fish, nicely coated here with the adobo. And now we just wait. It'll take about five or six more minutes to crisp up that skin underneath and for the adobo to set on the top and that mayonnaise to kind of melt in its creamy goodness to everything. I can tell already <laughs> this is going to be a feast. For me, a day at the beach isn't just about sitting around in the sand and soaking up the rays. I like to do something that's a little more active. So today I decided to try my hand for the first time at paddle boarding. The fact that this beautiful bay here in Puerto Escondido is so calm made it easy and fun. Fortunately, I did work up a pretty good appetite. When you come to Puerto Escondido, you can choose a lot of different beaches to go to, but my favorite really is called Carrizalillo. And it's my favorite because it's almost inaccessible. You can't park anywhere near it. You have to walk uh, down a huge long flight of stairs from a cliff on the top. And it's so protected that the water is always calm. It's a nice mix of locals and tourists here. And the cool thing is that along the beach, there's all these beautiful little restaurants, or rustic little restaurants, I think you could call them. And they have a dish that just becomes everybody's favorite. It's a very simple dish, but totally captivating. These are called encamaronadas, which means that they have some shrimp in them, camarones, um, but they're kind of like a little fried taco. And I've heard people say they could live on these things. Encamaronadas are one of my favorite things to eat when I'm in Mexico. Crispy tortillas, melted cheese, shrimp, salsa. And you know, they're really easy to make at home too. I'm gonna start by chopping some shrimp and grating the cheese. And I'm gonna chop up all the vegetables for the salsa. filling, the first thing that you need to do is to film a hot skillet with a little bit of oil. Slide in the salsa mexicana. 
And then just like in Mexico, I'm gonna season it with about a tablespoon of ketchup and a tablespoon of Tamasula hot sauce. Stir that around, let it cook for four or five minutes until everything starts to come together and it gets a little thickish. Lainey, you wanna slide the shrimp in yep. here? I'm all ready. It smells so good. It'll just take about two or three minutes for that shrimp to cook, and then the filling is all ready. Okay, let's start doing these. Skillet is hot. Film of oil on the bottom of it to make those tortillas crispy. Mm. Okay. okay. So, ready with the cheese? I'm all ready. We're gonna let those cool down for a couple of minutes and then we're ready to dig in. In the evening, I made my way back to Huatulco, but I didn't wanna end the day without one of my absolute favorite seafood snacks at the famous El Grillo Marinero. It's been an incredible day of snacking. Now I'm back in Huatulco with the perfect end to the perfect day. I mean, this is the classic cocktail campechano. It's the mixture of shrimp and octopus and sea snail done in Mexican seafood cocktail style. Now they, they give you a cocktail sauce it's based on ketchup here, but it's not very spicy and it's not very tangy, but on the table, they give you different kinds of Mexican hot sauces. I like the Valentina, so I'm gonna give it a douse of that, and then grab a lime here to squeeze on it. Now you stir that up, and you have something that I think is both invigorating, refreshing, and soul satisfying. You know how much I love to get off the beaten path, and I encourage you guys to do exactly the same thing. Push your boundaries, get out of your comfort zone a little bit, because that's where the reward is. That's where you'll discover things that will create those memories that you'll take with you forever. But of course, that doesn't mean that at the end of the day, you can't come back to your nice resort hotel and have a margarita. Salute.